everybody, I'm out here today working on my new worm den. I'm making them out of these Rubbermaid containers. They are LDPE, low density polyethylene, and you know, HDPE, high density, is a little bit better, but you know, this is still totally safe for worms. And I'm trying to build this out of all this free wood that I've gotten. I've gotten this from uh, the business down the street that I've gotten my cardboard from, and a lot of my other wood that I made for my tables, and even my chicken coop. So I found this piece, it's going to end up being, you know, close to perfect. I just got to modify it a bit. I've already ripped off a couple big pieces of wood. And I've got some other old pieces of wood here. So we'll be putting in a bottom. And then I'll be getting some pond liner and lining the inside of this so that it's a waterproof container. Move the water down to one end. That's where I'll have my connecting piece with an on-off valve so that I when I want to empty out my warm tea, I can do that at any time. And the reason I'm making this structure and not just doing everything as its individual tote is because I'm trying to save money and it's going to save me time when I'm actually collecting my tea. For my other designs, I put the, the faucet connection here so I have an on-off valve to get my tea. If I have that on every single one, I have to go to every single one and empty it. I also might have to tilt it and I don't want to deal with that. Plus, I'm going to have to buy bulkhead fittings for each one. Those are like 10 bucks a piece. Plus, if I'm doing it that way, I need one bottom tote to be the drain tote. When the worm compost is water, the water goes down to the bottom and collects the bottom one. So I would have to have six more of these as well. So it cuts down a lot on the cost of materials by building a secondary vessel to hold the worm tea. All of these buckets will have holes drilled in them, and it's going to drain down into this bottom section. Now, unfortunately, I, you know, if I was in a custom build this, I would have made this a little bit wider. That's okay. Uh, what I'll do instead, I'll just make sure that when I drill my holes at the bottom here, that they're away from that edge so that water's not dripping on that. I want the all the worm tea to go straight down and out. These guys cost eight bucks a piece, and I got twelve of them. I'm gonna start with just two tiers. All right, let's keep building. Now that this is done, I need to start thinking about my legs. I don't want to have this thing on the ground. So I need to figure out what height I want it. So I want to consider, you know, when I'm lifting things up and down, I don't want to be bent over when I'm lifting. So somewhere about here would be pretty nice for me. So I'm going to start figuring that out and measuring it out. Okay, everybody, it's July 4th, 2017 today. And I'm out here um, working for my freedom, making my worm bin. What I've done now is I've got my main table here together and then I've got all the legs. I've got them all pre-cut. Maybe like 11 different legs I believe. I'll be using like three main support. I was able to build the whole thing out of recycled wood. It's fun. And free so I really like that. So yeah the support pillars will just go under, directly under. These other legs are going to be mounted on the outside and then I'm going to put four legs also against these two by fours facing this direction. That way on the, the legs on the bottom are facing like this and like this, it'll keep it more stable and less wobbly. If I let the worm tea completely fill up, it's going to be fairly heavy, so you know, I want it to be a pretty sturdy table here. Alright, so I'm just going to pre-drill everything, just two and a half. I'm drilling through two 2x4s, two so it's like three inches. So two by 4 is actually 1.5 inches in width here. I'm going to pre-drill my first four legs. No matter where it goes on this table, it's going to be identical. And then I'm going to drill in the screws ahead of time and then just put it together more quickly. So I think it's really smart to bulk tasks things together into single tasks because you can do it a lot more fast. It's more efficient. My first four legs, now I'm going to switch to screwing. Now I'm just going to attach the legs. All right, you guys don't need to see how to do this. You guys know what to do. All right, let's see this in fast motion. So this is what we have now. I'm gonna drill the hole right here. This entire 
table is going to be tilted in this direction and the hole will be in a lower section so it'll, it'll help push the water out and then I'll have a on and off valve down at the bottom that I can collect the tea with. So this is a uni seal. I've used a bulkhead fitting. It fulfills the same purpose as a bulkhead fitting except it's just designed as like a very tight fit and it totally fills in the hole once you shove the pipe through. So this is a three quarter inch and it got, you can even kind of see how it tapers there at the end. So when you shove a three quarter inch pipe through this, it pushes the outsides against whatever you're uh, mating it to, like a rain barrel, or in my case, this wood and the pond liner. So this is a really cool way. They're like four bucks each, as opposed to a bulkhead fitting, which is around 10 bucks each. The bulkhead fitting you can screw on and off. So this is my first time using this. I'm excited to try this out. Um, it's supposed to not leak, and you don't have to use any chemical gasket uh, silicone stuff. So I'm very curious to use this. So this is going to be the hole where everything, all the room tea will drain out. So I'm using a one and a quarter inch hole saw. That's what it calls for for a three quarter inch mini seal. Here we go. All right, so now that I've sanded my table, um, then my next step, I'm gonna drill out the holes on my tubs here. I like to use one quarter inch uh, drill bit size for the drainage holes that will go on the bottom of the tubs. So I'm gonna be putting air holes, two rows at the top of the bins here. To get the correct measurement, I'm gonna put the bricks that I'm gonna use to make some space. My worm compost is gonna take up this bottom half and this top half, I'll have a couple air holes. Since they're gonna be sets of two, I'm gonna drill through them at same time because I didn't custom build this table these things overhang a little bit that's okay I'm just gonna make sure that I put all my drainage holes in the center and not over the top of the 2x4 here so here's how many holes I put in my tub that'll be plenty to drain all the juice out and it's also plenty of spaces for the worms to crawl up when they want to migrate up I was easily able to go through both bins I'm going to drill all of these, and then I'm going to clean the plastic out. So whenever you're drilling something that needs to be drained, especially a worm container, it's very important to drain the juices out so they don't drown. You want to make sure that you're drilling holes at every little... Uh, you see these outcroppings here where they've done the plastic? At each station here, so this is a level, this is a level, this is a level, this is a level, that should be a hole because otherwise the, the juices are going to pool up in here, but it's good to just have access for the water to drain out at any point. And because a lot of the weight will be in the center here, because there's only going to be one brick here, when that weight's down, not too much will get stuck here. If it does, it'll go to these out of holes and it'll be okay. Next, I'm using a razor blade and if there's any like, see how this is really stuck? I'll just kind of twist my razor blade around in there and get the excess plastic out of there so that the worms can crawl through freely. So I'm going to scrape all that out. I'm going to dump out this plastic into a trash can and then I'll take water, a hose, and just shoot all this out to get any other remaining plastic out. I don't want plastic in my worm compost. It probably would be okay. They'd live next to it. It's fine. But obviously we don't want any weird chemicals leaching into our soil, which will eventually become our food. So it's very important. Let's just get rid of all this junk. Start with a clean slate. All right, my next step is to install this pond liner. This is what people would use to make a pond in their backyard. They dig a hole, they put down this underlayment. Uh, it's more of a felt type material that protects this pond liner from rocks and debris, from tears. Um, but since I'm just using smooth wood, um, I'm just going to use the straight up liner. This cost me $35, I think, shipped to my house. It's 7 by 10 so I could get like multiple cuts out of this. I could probably get like five cuts for this. So I, I, you know, I can use it for some other project probably. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is just lay it out, uh, cut it out, and then all I can do now is just wait for my dad to get here with the staple gun. So 
the nice thing to finish on this one box is the palm vine here. And I'm just going to use the staple gun and use my hands to kind of get it nice and tight and snug. And then I'll staple to the outside. Okay, so that's nice and snug on there now. Now I want to get the uh, uni seal installed. So for this, I'm going to just snug up the liner to the hole that I made. A little X cut here. And then install this. So what I'm going to do is just pre-make my valve setup for my worm bin. So it's going to go through the uni seal. It's going to connect to a 90. I'll have a valve in there, and then after the valve will be a nozzle going down, so I can collect it real easily in a bucket. Here we go, primer. Alright, I'm back with 25% more. So, got my glue. Now this is going to go through my seal into here, and I'll fill up from here. Okay, so it's time to put the downspout in. So now I just need to attach this to the bottom of that. And then it's going to come out like this. So now we'll let this set and then I'll fill it up with some water and make sure that the seal is good. Throw all this away. So the time has come to fill up these worm buckets here. I've got a bunch of different carbon here. I've got some mulch, which is like the most long-term food. I've got some uh, brown paper packaging material, egg carton, and some compost, coffee, um, and then I've got some real fresh stuff over here, which is some zucchini, some other kitchen scraps, and some green beans. And that's what's going to start these guys off here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just cut out cardboard for the bottom of these so that the holes, you know, help prevent the worms from falling down into the worm tea area. Just having a nice piece of cardboard in there will do the trick on that. It doesn't have to be perfectly fit for the box. It just needs to be pretty good. Okay, so here's what I've done. I've basically blocked the holes, but water, of course, can get through. Once the cardboard's fully soaked, it just drips right through the holes. So now I'm going to start doing layers here. I've got my compost. So my first layer of this carbon here will be some compost, and then I'll do soil, carbon, soil, carbon. And so you just really want to have a mix of different types of carbon. That's why I've got I've got three, four different types. So I've got regular cardboard. I've got egg cartons. I've got this patch, really light packaging brown material, and then I've got some leaves and a mulch. And then I'll put most of my fresh stuff um, at the top of the bin. And that'll encourage the worms to really live near the top and feed on the fresh stuff here. Okay, so that's what my first layer looks like, wetted down. My PVC glue is now set, so it's now inert, and I've run some water through it. So now I've um, blocked it off to uh, make sure that it's completely sealed. I'm gonna do my next layer now, and then I'll run more water through it. Okay. 
Okay, this is layer number two. My worms locally I'm from a guy who lives, you know, 10 miles away, and he raises red worms. So these are the castings and his worms. So I'm going to be adding these castings down to each bucket here. Half of this bucket per tote. I'm really happy with this tote size, even with this full, I can still lift it, but it's pretty darn easy. Okay, so got all the worms added. I just want to check now that. Okay, it is holding liquid just fine. I'm just gonna check underneath that there's no leaks. And there's absolutely no leaks. So the uni seal worked really well. It's not super thick or potent, but just the act of filtering through all that compost gives me a nice little batch. In order to get this to work really well, I leveled this out. This entire table is tilted to lean this way towards my valve here. So you can see here where the drain is, it's a little bit lower, and I just cut a chunk out of it. I just cut this little square chunk out, and then there's a second floor here on the bottom. Well, not the floor, but there's a 2 by 4 going across here. My gamma seal's right around here, and I have my PVC pipe going through the gamma seal right here. Oh, one more thing I forgot to do. I need to add the bricks underneath, and that'll give support to the, the bottom middle of the tip. I'm putting it a long way so the water can flow this way you more easily. And then I'll reinforce the bottom. So these are all the greens I was able to come up with today. We'll see how many you're feeding on these tomorrow and then possibly add some more um, within the next week. Well, this is enough to get them going. So now let's add a little bit of straw and some more carbon on there. Just so they have access to carbon and greens and soil all at the same time so they don't have to go looking for it. This is what the final stage looks like. My air vent holes are right up here at the very top so that's why I put them so high um, so that when I fill up all my material that you know, it's still some room to breathe here. Uh, my plastic lids also have air holes. Okay, so I'm gonna take my little piece, carbon piece. This just blocks um, any extra light and just keeps them moist at the top and um, keeps them feeling safer so that they can feed. All right, perfect. So now what I have is six worm bin totes, all draining into a single uh, tank that has a single nozzle that I can drain. And now I've got some warm tea in there that I can actually use right now. And um, so for now, I'm gonna let them work on these. Once they get them, you know, 80% of the way composted, I'm gonna add my other bins and I'll prepare those bins the exact same way I did here with soil and carbon and keeping it moist all the way through. And I'll add that second tier, the second tote to each one of these boxes and the worms that are composting in the boxes will move their way up to the second box um, where there will be fresh bedding and green kitchen waste. So then what they do is they make their, they finish off what they're doing in the bottom box and they move their way to the second tote where they will begin composting that one. And what you're left with is in the bottom tote, you have all of your worm compost ready to go. You don't have to filter out any worms. There's a couple worms left, but you know, they can just help out your garden. And um, this makes it really easy to collect your worm compost so that you don't have to filter them out and do any of those other techniques that you might have seen online about how you, you, know, you make a volcano and dry them out. And you know, eventually you have worms left at the bottom of the volcano. This method is way easier, takes less time, I, you know, little effort, you know, once a month I add some food. That's all I have to do this. Every three months I clean these out and then add the next tier. It's really minimal effort. And this is my, the best design yet. I think this is a really ideal size. It's an ideal size because you can pick them up when they're full. They all drain into one single tank, single nozzle. So this is, you know, the cheapest way to do it. The final thing I want to do is just protect these tubs and the worms from the sun because the sun beats on here in the summer sun, late in the afternoon, 
I don't want the worms to overheat and die. And then it'll help prevent sun damage to these boxes. So I've just got a nice big old roll of burlap. I recommend getting one. It'll save you lots of money. You can use it for so many different things. I cover my compost with it. I, you can create shade for your animals. You can use it as a tablecloth. You can cover your worm bins. You can cover your irrigation. Uh, there's a lot of different things you can use it for. And when it's all messed up at the end of its life, you can compost it. So it's a good material. I want to make sure that it extends farther so that it will cover my bucket and the valve and everything as well. And then to secure the burlap, I'm just going to use a half inch number six wood screw. And then I'll just spread apart the burlap and then just slide it on there. And great, so the final product now. Worms are settled into their home, they're ready to go. And it's fully covered, so it's safe from the sun. And that's it, in about three months I'll have some beautiful worm compost ready to go. Hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things about uh, worm composting. Check out uh, my other videos and don't forget to like and subscribe.